Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I am building a Rans S21 outbound bush plane in my garage here in Oregon. I wanted to make a couple announcements before we get going. I'm super excited. I'm flying my Bonanza to Oshkosh. So let's link up. Flying to Montana on Sunday afternoon evening, Hardin, big county airfield, 00 uniform. And then on to Oshkosh on Monday morning, get there about midday central time. Hopefully there's enough camping spots left at that point. It's first come, first serve. So save me a campground, but let's link up. Follow me on Instagram. That's gonna be the best way to kind of keep up with well, the shenanigans that I'm up to and, to and to link up. So comment here, subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up, I sure appreciate that. It helps the algorithm. I didn't think I'd say that or know that word or care about that word, but it's just kind of a fun challenge for me. Oshkosh, so I'm so excited about that. Okay, this episode, um, there's two versions as always. There's a long form episode and a short form episode. Short form edited highly for YouTube content about 10 minutes and then this <laughs> part one of this wing series is gonna go pretty darn long on the long form one. But there's a lot of good detail in here if I do say so myself, a lot of mistakes. So make sure and watch the whole video to figure out what the mistakes were so I can address them and that you don't make those same mistakes uh, as I do. But anyway, that's enough of the admin. Without further ado, Jim, hold the tape. Feels good to have wing spars on the table. No, I'm not building both wings at once, but I am doing the optional landing light. Let me show you, got the template going here's the template for the landing light cutout i'm going to try it with a dremel with a bunch of cutoff discs here's the lens to slide in you got to be really careful with that it's protected pretty well quick impromptu unboxing of aero leds super bright landing light So the RANS option <clears throat> comes with those lights, comes with the lenses, and then the mounting hardware and brackets. So uh, we're, there's a bunch of different diagrams. Right now we're on this one, just figuring out where to tape it, measuring dimensions and getting it all, all correct. Then we'll mark it, cut it, file it, and then probably put it away for a while because I'm not going to mount it uh, while we're rigging the wing, but there you go. It's exciting to be starting the wings. We are prepping wing parts, doublers galore, and Tomas is degreasing, cleaning spars. It's a thankless job. Thanks, Tomas. <laughs> it's no longer a thankless job. <laughs> Checked for um, light. This is pretty good. Really good. How's this one looking? Stainless steel rivets are going in, so back to the priming. This area commands a little bit more attention than the others um, <clears throat> because the 
outer rivets are shorter than all the inner rivets. Also, no rivet through the second hole because I'm about to drill with, uh, I think, a 3 8 Okay, these are the wing attach bolts. They're 3 8 inch, and you've got to kind of do some match drilling with a 3 8 bit, but they say to test the bit to make sure on a scrap piece of metal to make sure that these bolts fit snugly. So it's not a flat piece, but goddamn. It's a snug fit, but that was an unpleasant experience. Okay, back from the hardware store with a new, more appropriate 3 8 bit. Should be a lot more gentle on it. We also got a more appropriate 5 16th bit, so we're not aggressively tearing through the aluminum. Okay, so this guy, 3 8 bolt, has to go through here, through there, and out the back. So, length looks right. I'm going to step it up from 5 sixteenths first before I go to 3 eighths. So we sandbag underneath it to get it vertical. And I think the theory is going through both of them so they're aligned, not going through one, not the other. Okay, here we go. Cool. So that's well, scared you. Yeah, she did. <laughs> All right, that's the five sixteenths. Now let's go to three eighths. I hope that's right. Real sturdy. Yeah. Oh. oh. Made of wood. It's real sturdy. What movie is that from? Oh, Goonies. No. Happy uh, Gilmore. So, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> We're just sourcing parts to make some wings. So we got the truss, we got the ribs for her pleasure, and dad jokes all day long. I'm gonna be reaching in here, and I have big hands. So it's probably gonna be my kids that are gonna be reaching in here, so we're yeah. cleaning up the edges. So don't get cut little wrists. G-rated. <laughs> Don't want to lose any sponsors. <laughs> Two guys with larger than average hands. <laughs> okay, we're bringing in the big guys. Yeah. Oh, no, this one. <laughs> Too easy. I was right there. Good job. Okay, I've got 13 millimeters and half inch, so roughly about the same. All right, we're gonna mess of ribs. All right, fluting these ribs kind of blows. Okay. All right, we've got the aileron bell crank here as well as the flat belt crank. So we're pressing in these nice bearings. Kellen, if you wanna take that out of the bag. You're not supposed to press on the inner uh, bearing, only on the outer bearing. So I've got it right sized. This one for me is a 
15 16 so just under an inch so you kind of initially press it so it's nice and straight okay, there it is. and if you only pressed it in without using one of these it wouldn't seat all the way down to the seal that's why you need to press it in and see how it's recessed right there close let's do this again find here we go it's not quite aligned so i'll go a little bit more and then we'll realign it good in the line so it's not going to press the belt crank itself here we go Just like that. Feels good. Looks <clears throat> flush. Great. We are done. Thank you guys. Okay, these are the four ribs that you'll need to match drill the quarter inch. So rib three, four, seven, and eight. Okay, organized chaos with the wings. All the flap hinges located and clicoed in place. The flap bell crank. Uh, doubler in place, and then flap hinge in place, uh, hinge arm, and now aileron hinge arm, aileron belt crank doubler, and aileron hinge arm, all click code in place, and now the next step is to match drill the holes that aren't there, and then we got to identify, see I don't think we match drill that quarter inch hole, but we do match drill quarter inch holes that butt up against bell cranks. So these two, and I believe these two, I gotta double check on that one. So figure out where the bell cranks are gonna go and match drill the quarter inch hole. But I, there are a couple that you don't need to drill. I don't think it's the end of the world if you do, but it's not super clear on the instructions. So there's uh, uh, something to look out for. The other thing is, you know, so careful in adding primer to where the uh, stainless steel rivets go then I discovered oh all the ribs attached via stainless steel so uh, if it weren't raining right now I'd take it outside and do more primer on both the spars but now that we have that attached it's going to be a little bit more clumsy but um, that's going to be required as well it's both sides of the ribs inside and out so uh, that's going to be the task for today once it start, stops raining primer match drill and then I've got my intern coming over to work on this part, attach, de detach all these. And what these go to are wherever there's uh, a doubler or a hinge, you're gonna um, use that to attach it to the uh, rear spar. finally a non rainy day and we're tidying up the um, primer areas and tried to figure out where stainless steel rivets go through all the ribs and the spar caught up the spar all those strips there so pretty soon we'll be clicking these ribs back or in place and riveting then onto the bell cranks I saw somebody that was priming all of these, but I don't see why. Because there's no stainless steel rivets that go through. Anyway, nose is healing. Oh, God. Okay, we're about to pull our first rivets on the wing. It's kind of exciting. It's these attach angles that attach to each of the aileron and hinge arms and the ribs. The APQ 44s. So there's five of those angles per wing. Prime them because there's going to be stainless steel rivets attaching them to this rear spar. Okay, 
All right, now we're going ahead and riveting all the hinge arms and belt crank supports, doublers, etc., to the ribs. Clicoing the ribs to the forward spar. It's funny now that people can see kind of an airfoil um, over at the restaurant. Um, I've got my first <laughs> couple looky loos coming in. So, um, but yeah, now it's starting to look like a wing. These guys put it together in no time. Click on the, the forward spar. Uh, we're gonna work on the rear spar. Then we're gonna get the uh, tie down um, in place, which is, this goes on rib number seven. So once, we'll get it, once we get it up on the uh, blocks, of course. And just like that, we have a rear spar. Killing it, you guys. Okay, the wing tie down goes on rib seven. So we just unclicoed that. Pretty good. If it's not perfect, we can still rotate it. Good job. Nice, bro. All right, Kellen's gonna build the flat belt crank. All right, we are using washers to space. They give you a choice of thick and thin washers, two thicks, which is pretty good for me. I actually put in a thin one as well, but then once you sight it down, um, it had a, just a hair of a bow to it, so I took a thin washer out. And I've been seeing other people on YouTube use thread locker, like Loctite Blue. The flap Teleflex and belt crank mount is quite a bit thicker than all the other hinge arms, so make sure you're using the correct rivets. In this case, it is, oh, let's see, AAPQ45s. We are about to rivet this frame together, ribs to spars, and there's three things that uh, I'm reminded of. Number one is you don't want to rivet anything on the middle row, because that's where the gap seals are gonna go. So I've rearranged Clicos to put two clicos on each of those holes. Um, well, where there's a, an attach angle, you don't wanna get the top one, cause that's a gap seal hole as well. So just rivet the bottom one and avoid the middle of the three on each of the ribs. Number two, rib number seven, that's what I'm gonna start with. You'll notice it's not the rear uh, spar is not clicoed and that's so that you can get in this area a little bit easier because you've got the wing tie down piece to um, to attach right there. 2.1 is the fact that those use different longer rivets because of that piece. All right, number three, do not, do not, do not rivet the root rib, rib number one in place right now because you've got a lot of work to do with the fuel tank. So that remains clear code. Yes, I realize this looks completely horrible, but I mean, look at that. It, it, it's it's unfloatable, but it'll be fine. Okay, that's it, on to riveting. Turned out pretty good. Killing what's next. 
What do you think is next? I see some bell cranks just sitting in the middle of the table. What do you think? What do you say? We... Bell yeah, let's bolt those babies in. All right, I got all the hardware I need, and now I just need a pair of helping hands because you need to lock tight both those bolts and put them in. Black sand shims, easily lost. Who needs a helping hand when you have two by fours? All right, now I'm just sliding in a 3 thin washer. Next is the aileron cable. Here we've got the aileron cable mounted. Now here's the flaps. Flap, teleflex. Okay. Two hands. It looks like it's symmetrical, so it doesn't look like it matters which side goes where, but this is how it works. You can see that. It fits like a glove, actually, once you figure it out. It's just that little, little gap right there. And then make sure you safety wire it through these holes. Apologies for the boring safety wire video. Just wanted to kind of document it for inspection purposes. This was kind of cool. The old kit or the old instructions said that you had to drill out these grommet holes, but uh, they came pre-drilled at the right size. And you can kind of coax it through. Yeah. Good. Looks good. Great. Okay, through here, this, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I don't know wiring super well. So in this period, rather than videotaping, I was doing a lot of research and just studying and I didn't feel good about this, but I feel good now. Um, spoiler alert, part two, I'll talk a lot more about the wiring and the plumbing for the pedo tube with AOA. And look, like that is. We've got the top wing clamped to the table for the edge forming tool. This is not going to be fun. This. Gotta trim this wing stringer. Yeah. Good. 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 Good
Coleco Masters are on it. Like with bonnet. Done in no time. Make that porcupine. Here we are match drilling the top skin to the leading edge spar. So we definitely didn't do too much. I'm just wondering how much more we should go. While the countersinking is happening, we are working on the fuel tank support. And you have to kind of figure out which way. So this is the root side. And then eventually you will put them underneath there. Here you go. So we're going to try wet riveting these stainless steel rivets into this aluminum skin and spar um, by spraying the primer into a Dixie cup and then dipping that way. Okay. So I'll do the spraying, but you'll do the dipping and planting and then I'll do the riveting. Deal? All right. <laughs> there you go. Good. Excellent, that looks great. Oh, the first rivet in the wing! <laughs> Woo! Almost done riveting the wings. I haven't filmed in a few days. I haven't been working. I had to fly to um, Fresno for a good buddy of mine's funeral. He unfortunately passed away in an RV6A crash. He just bought it a month prior and I don't know many of the details and I don't feel comfortable talking about that quite yet, but full military funeral, so it was a, a tough one. That's why I'm wearing the Aloha shirt today. Uh, I'm thinking about him, but anyway, I've made a lot of progress today on riveting the wings and really it's been pretty straightforward just putting some pressure on each um, to try to get out all the pillowing and then right now i'm riveting the fuel tank supports since they're kind of hanging um, you really got to push them up as you rivet so maybe i'll try to get a, a shot of that Hey Siri, turn the garage outlet off. Okay, the hot water circulation pump is off.
trailing edge is match drilled, it's clean, deburred, everything else. It's time to do the gap seals, except I have a pretty major problem. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When I removed all the Clecos, look what's going on with all these holes. All of them. All of them are now no longer matching up. So, um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. It does mean, though, that if I just go ahead and start trying to match drill for the gap seals, that's obviously not going to work out well. What I'm thinking the potential solution will be to put in a bunch of Clecos, realign everything, and then just do one gap seal at a time. That's what I'm thinking right now. Ooh, these are the moments. Okay, they are aligning better now that I put in all the Clecos. So the game plan now, I'll take off this bottom Cleco so that there's a little bit of play because right now it's pretty darn tight as a tiger. And then put in the gap seal and then put that last Cleco in to realign everything because it didn't really start aligning super well until that last Cleco was in. So that's, in my opinion, that's pretty vital that that bottom Cleco is in. After I get the gap seals fitted and then I'll match drill and hopefully we're back in the game. Got the gap seals match drilled, and I grabbed the aileron and flap over there to test fit them, and it's a little bit unclear in the instructions on when to go ahead and rivet the bottom, but I think it's right now, because you want to put on the aileron and flap to test fit everything, but obviously they won't go on with the Clecos in place. So uh, before I do all that, I'm going to take both of these off, a lot of Cleco work, to clean everything up, deburr, always be deburring. Shoot some primer, rivet the bottom of the gap seals on, test fit the aileron and flaps, and then once everything is good, finish riveting the wing, then we'll flip it over. I almost forgot, on the aileron gap seal, there are three holes that you need to match drill down here. So I got almost done uncleat going it, then I remembered it, so I put in a few Clecos. Enough to match drill. One, two, and three. New jet, new day. Locked and loaded. Ready to start riveting the aileron gap seal. And the flap's ready to go to. These are these stainless steel rivets that every time I pull the trigger, I'm worried that the mandrel and head is gonna get popped through. Here's a gotcha, and I think it's kind of like the first major shortcoming of this kit, which that's that's saying a lot for this kit because I've, I've progressed pretty far and, uh, and it's been awesome. It's not very clear what rivets to use where. You kind of can dig it out and you figure out that it's CCPQ42s. Stainless steel, eighth inch rivets with this sort of a length, basically that's that 42 moniker. But there's a note in the instructions that says use longer rivets where the wing truss mounts because there's a doubler behind here. So it has to be a longer rivet, okay? But it doesn't say which rivet to use. It doesn't supply you any rivets, which rivets to use. So I had to go through my surplus rivets, which not everybody has, and find that CCPQ44 to use here and here. So that, uh, Again, <laughs> really happy with this kit, but that's something that they can improve in the, in the instructions and something for you to look at if you're building one as well. Okay, I'm full of gems this morning that are probably gonna get me in trouble. But I just realized that you could probably install these gap seals with Clecos from the, the backside and then test fit everything and then just follow the uh, order of the manual. I thought the order was out of order and that you had to rivet these things first. Hopefully I'm not getting myself into trouble by riveting them first and then test fitting the flaps. You can use a ball peen hammer to kind of adjust the gap seals in case there's any sort of clearance issues fitment wise with the aileron and flap. 
but I didn't see the problem going forward and then going back. But I didn't know that there was enough room under here for me to Clico, but there clearly is. So next wing, right wing, I'll stick to the manual and do it that way. Just make sure you're Clicoing the bottom of the gap seal from behind. There you have it. Little things that like, maybe if I watched somebody else's build video before I did this important step, that's another good thing. Caution as you go forward, maybe watch my whole video because maybe I'll try to capture all the mistakes I make and don't just like do what I do. How not to build a, <laughs> it's 21. No adjustment of the gap seals needed. Before I put the AAPQ42s away, I did a quality inspection and found two rivets that need to be replaced. And this rivet obviously failed, so I'll need to drill that guy out. There, bingo. And pull out the bottom. So it's super intimidating at first, but after you do a few, um, it's not so bad. Much better, sitting flat. Yep, we flipped the wing and my camera died halfway through so I don't think I got any footage of it. But since I've flipped the wing, I think it's a logical place to wrap this video up. I'll make it a two part series. This is probably a pretty long part one. I think part two will go a little bit quicker. We're gonna focus on skinning the bottom of the wing, plumbing the and mounting the pitot tube, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So look for that in the next episode. I really appreciate you guys watching and commenting. I love all your guys' um, comments. I reply to 90 to 95% of your comments. So keep them coming, keep the encouragement coming. It's been an awesome build. I realize there's some frustration that, that bubbles up, but I'm just being me and there is some frustration. But more often than not, I really wanna reiterate what an awesome project this is, what a great kit this is, and what a great time in my life to be, to be doing this. So all positive. Love each and every one of you guys for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram, oh by the way. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Till then, you're cleared to wreck. <laughs>